Fernie round three. <clears throat> um, this time I got the chesty, so the view will be different. I know where I'm going, so that'll be different. Uh, I can ride it with a little more confidence. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I feel good. I got a decent rest. Uh, so this time I will make sure I don't film a lot of the ascent so that you can see the whole descent of Sidewinder uh, and a little bit before that. So here we go. So Randy does this thing where if it's like supposed to be a special day for you, it's never just a special day, it's like a special weekend. So like birthdays or in this case Father's Day, which is weird and there's a part of me that maybe wants to have a conversation about Father's Day stuff or father stuff in general. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not because uh, it's just a weird awkward conversation probably. Um, which means I should probably have it, but I don't know if I am yet. So anyway. Uh, but yeah, this, I mean today, I guess, today is Father's Day, um, and we just had a bunch of activities the past two days, um, and things, and like gifts, and like cards, and fun stuff, and whatever, and uh, I was not ready for that, and I got some big surprises um, as well, like while we were in Fernie yesterday, you know, I, you know, went out for a, a long ride, and, like rode some trails, and then when we had lunch, and then like, I wish that Randy brought the GoPro. I wish that she like, I don't know, I, I could I could feel the own surprise on my face. I wonder how it would have looked, but like, um, yeah, like we went in to eat and I was sitting there with Lil and then uh, Emma and, and Randy just like brought in like flowers and like a bunch of stuff. And I was like, whoa, like, yeah. Anyway, so she surprised me with a bunch of stuff while we were having lunch in Fernie. And uh, yeah, it was just really, uh, but yeah, it was really great. Um, like I said, I was surprised and it was fantastic. It was a good time. And uh, yeah, today we got some stuff going on, uh, spending some time with Randy's dad. And yeah, I don't know. It was just like really like awkward and weird because this is not, this is not a thing. I don't know. I feel like it's in a, the transitional phase uh, where I, a transitional phase of, of this role. I mean, we're talking about Father's Day, and so, like, that's what I'm talking about. But, I mean, I know if we were to label that role, that is the role that I am playing as a parent, right? 
Um, and then, I mean, the only difference between a mother and father really we're talking about is just like um, assigning a gender, I guess. Um, but either way, it's like playing the role, just call it Parents Day, and then I'm playing the role of a parent. So, I don't know, like that's, that's what I've been doing, and that's the thing, I am there every day. I've got the gray hair to prove it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know, it's been, that's, like, yeah, it's been, I don't know how long now since I've just been around, I mean a little under a year, I guess, uh, around the kids anyway. Um, but, especially the last, I don't know how many months now, that it's been like a daily, daily, daily thing, I feel like it's been a long time, and I know that they get the sense of what that role is, like they very, they understand that role that is being played, they understand the association, the responsibility, the, um, the respect, I guess, of that role. Like, that's an understanding that's there on both those kids' parts. So, like, yeah, they're aware of, of, of what's happening or what's there or what I am to them. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was still just weird. Like, you know, it's weird to be projecting onto the future a year from now in a way. But at the same time, I have no intention on going anywhere else obviously things happen and who knows what will happen but uh i was thinking the only reason i'm making that jump forward or that comparison is because i'm like ah i think it'd be much more like comfortable and expectant is the wrong word but i mean it was just like this year i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know where things were at i just didn't know and it was just like i don't know it was just and it, that's the thing it was still awkward for me it was still like ah is this what is happening? Like, what, uh, I like I never expected to... I haven't celebrated this day for anybody, let alone be the one who is somewhat being celebrated or however you want to word it. So, I mean, like, it has been... I don't know how many... It's been decades, maybe, like, that I've ever, like, remotely celebrated this day for anybody. And maybe longer than... It's just been a long time. Um, like, a long time, like, three decades, maybe, to the point where I couldn't remember even doing it if I was four years old. So, yeah, it's just not something I really recall ever doing, something that I have issues with, or just, I mean, have, like, turmoil with, I guess, um, because I don't express Happy Father's Day to someone who's hasn't been around or cares to communicate, really, um... So, the other thing that I'm going to throw out there, like I said, I don't know how much of a conversation, or if I was going to push myself to have a conversation later, but the other thing is that being in this role that I'm in, so whatever that is, a parental role, a step-parent, um, it made me really appreciate and understand better how Norman my stepdad which i've never thought of him as a stepdad for so long i mean that's just the again labels and terminology but i've never thought of it that way because i mean my mom got married to norman when i was an adult i didn't live at home like their relationship didn't start till i was an adult so um it was just i don't know i just never really like connected with that label and there wasn't any like raising of me by him but, and I told him this um, a month or two ago, that I, just because being in the position I'm in, I've come to appreciate the fact that really what is it that that a parent is or whatever. Um, and I feel like he's been a good example, like a good example and someone who teaches through example. Um, and I believe that there are things in my adulthood that I have learned from him and that I really appreciate that. So... I don't know, those are some things that I've learned too, just in the past, I don't know how many months now, that help me understand and appreciate other people in my life that I just never really, I don't know, connected to certain, like again, who cares what a label is? It's, it's more about, I guess, what a label would represent and figuring that out and realizing like, what is a parent? Insert good parent here. Like, people call themselves fathers all the time, or dads, and they don't... They, what is the role that you're fulfilling? A biological process? You're nothing. Like, you know, that's... That, that, that could have been anybody at that point. It, it, it's not... 
you want to attach that late i mean that's the thing that same thing as saying family like okay so you've got a connection of blood what have you done lately you know like who are you if you're someone who's abusive and who or whatever or if you're just someone who's not there and someone hasn't seen you for decades are we still calling you family when you don't connect when you treat people poorly like i don't know like i think you choose your family um i don't think blood means anything and, th and that goes for labeling someone as a parent i'm like that's not what a parent is about like what is you know when you strip things down what is the value of a parent you know what this should be a conversation so i don't know yeah i'm gonna save that for a conversation i guess so anyway if you haven't watched the conversation i guess i'm gonna be talking about what a parent is <laughs> um anyway uh yeah i don't know i just wanted to express some stuff and express way too much Okay, so um, this is a workbook, Scholastic, Canadian curriculum, stuff I've looked through. Uh, we kind of use this to supplement um, Emma's schoolwork that she was doing over Google Classroom. Uh, she's behind in some areas, so uh, we're just trying to catch up in, in some areas. Other areas are just good practice, keep moving things forward, whatever. This is the reading comp section, and this was something that I had her do today. And I'm going to read this real quick here because otherwise I'll just have to leave a still shot of it and you'll have to read it and that's annoying. So again, this is reading comp. Call the police. It is good to know that you can call a police officer when you need help. You should not be afraid of the police. Their job is to help people. Police officers help find lost children. They direct traffic when there is a problem on the roads. They arrest criminals so that our towns are safe. When people have been in car accidents, police officers come quickly to help them. During floods, fires, and tornadoes, they take people to safe places. Sometimes they rescue people who are in danger. Police officers have saved many lives. Think of a police officer as your best friend. Then there's this activity that gets them to say, like, or to, to just whatever. Like, write, write down the words and, and help them with the spelling. And, and it also says um, that uh, this will let you know what the main part of the story is. What, what do you think the main idea of the story is to find out? Read the letters that are connected to the puzzle, write the letters in, other, in order beside the matching shapes. Police officers help people. Sometimes. So when I saw this today, I, was, I scrambled because um, there's a list that I have on the whiteboard downstairs uh, and I should take you down there and maybe, well, whatever doesn't matter there's a list i have on the whiteboard of things that i wanted to start doing once her google classroom stuff was done and it abruptly finished this week without any notice actually from uh teachers or anyone so um i thought i still had another week left and i wanted to prepare my own summer curriculum um like we've got like two workbooks like this that are more about the stuff she's actually gonna be learning in school I wanted to talk about stuff that would fit more into the social studies realm also just like critical thinking getting that started um, and, and talking about some major issues. You know, a couple weeks back, we went to, you know, the local Lethbridge protest, if you want to call it that, uh, Black Lives Matter at, at City Hall, and, um, we talked to her a little bit about George Floyd. We mainly went because we wanted to document it and take some pictures and whatever. And, uh, she came with us, and we talked to her about it, we told her what happened. It was very soft and gentle in general. It wasn't very specific, and, um, I, I guess... It wasn't very powerful in that aspect because it was just like an introduction to to this thing. And I, I've talked to her a little bit before about human rights because it came up in her social studies work, um, talking about about the Dalai Lama, I think, and how his human rights work that he did, stuff that just didn't sink in. And so I really wanted to, you know, over the summer talk about feminism, sexism, racism, homophobia, like all these things that, you know might get touched on in school and a lot of them that won't and things that are really important and I want to introduce her to these topics now so that way they're things that she can reference and especially you know everyone was talking about George Floyd we went to this protest what does that mean what is happening what is police brutality what is racism what is all this stuff so I had this list of things again I didn't get enough time to prepare for this because I did not expect to find this in her book and I wanted to start slow and just talk about what a minority is and talk about um, you know, vulnerable people and people of color and other minorities and just kind of lay some groundwork with some general stuff on like what is a minority versus a majority and then kind of talk about the context of that. 
And I saw that, and especially because of everything going on, I didn't want to just leave her to do that little assignment and not think anything of it. I want to inspire critical thinking. I know that my standards are, um, I guess, higher, and I don't have a problem with them being higher. Like, I teach high school. That is what I do. That is what I want to do. That is where, you know, my expectations are with a lot of things. That's where my understanding is for a lot of things. That's where, you know, like, when it comes down to certain things, I have knowledge based on things that, like, based on my education degree and whatever else that have to do with cognitive ability and um, childhood development and stuff like that. That stuff is there. That knowledge has a basis. But when it comes to the actual curriculum that I've learned and whatever else, that's all upper level and, and higher thinking and stuff. And that's what I like. But I'm not afraid to challenge someone younger to start thinking about these things. I think a lot of these things need to be introduced younger anyway. Um, there's things happening in the world. I'd like her to be informed. I'd like her to start thinking critically about things because that's one area where we struggle with a lot. Even when it comes down to very simple things, household tasks, nothing serious at all that's going on in the world that she needs to be aware of. So I had to do some other stuff and then, I, and then we came back to this and I showed her some videos um, of police brutality. I showed her, you know, four specific incidences, one of them being as recent as, you know, after George Floyd, which was, you know, that 75-year-old man or whatever getting pushed, and then the police just walking right past him while he's bleeding out of his ear. Um, so, <laughs> we went in chronological order, went with Rodney, yeah, I'll just say, went with Rodney King, Eric Garner, George Floyd, and then, it's really interesting, actually, I was thinking about this while I did that, is that I don't know this white man's name. And that's that's just an interesting thing that I, I just realized. Like, we've got all these other people, and maybe it's because he didn't die, maybe because he's white, maybe because whatever. But I don't know his name. Like, I know these other people, like, their names, and the famous cases that surround them, and, and whatever else. You know, I just know that he was at this protest for, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and George Floyd and whatever else. I know the circumstances. I don't know his name. And then I had a montage, like a five-minute montage of police brutality. And she was fine with the other videos. Like, we spent, like, 60 seconds, not even, on each of those four videos. And then, um, and this is, I had her read this paragraph first. And I was like, how do you feel about the paragraph? She says, good, like, you know, like, police are there to make us safe. And again, this is after we've already talked about it. We've already talked about how police killed George Floyd. That was a topic that was discussed weeks ago. And so already she kind of reset to the default of this is what the book says, so it must be true. Or I know the job of police, and so it must be true that they're there to keep us safe. And uh, so I'm glad that it got brought up again anyway, that we could go back into it again, because obviously she reset and completely forgot that there is such thing as nuance and complexity and critical thinking involved. Anyway, so a minute into this other video, which is just a compilation, she got upset, very uncomfortable, started crying and left. And I waited for her to come back, and then I said, hey, this is really important. I do want you to watch this. We need to have a discussion about this stuff and learn about this stuff, and I really want you to watch this. And she said, eventually she used the words that makes me uncomfortable. And I said, good. It makes me uncomfortable too. And then we had a whole different discussion about how you need to be uncomfortable in order to learn sometimes like with anything i compared it to other things like whether it be biking whether it be trying to play an instrument things drawing like things that she's tried in her life that she quit on way too soon um and been like yeah you you have to be uncomfortable like you think that and i compared it to me too and i was like, you think that 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 climbing like hundreds of meters in a day is comfortable for me like on my bike when we went to fernie that was a recent example of like how many i, I think it was close to 300 meters i ended up climbing on my bike and it was just like, you think it was comfortable? No. Like, the first time I did it, it wasn't comfortable. And the second time, it was actually way better and way easier and way more comfortable. But it's still not fun. Anyway, so that was a separate discussion we had based off of, of needing to grow and, and change and learn. And in order to be uncomfortable. And that's one huge thing I want to impress upon her as well. Is that, you know, you need to be uncomfortable. You need to be challenged. You need to uh, look at those challenges and try your best to move with them and accept them and, 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 you know, grow as a person. Anyway, this is way longer than I thought it was going to be. Make up for last week's vlog being so short. So, um, yeah. So she sat and she watched the rest. And then we had this discussion about all the stuff. We talked about, 
you know, um, what an authority figure is, how they can possibly abuse their power. We talked about vulnerable people, such as herself, what makes people vulnerable. Um, we talked about trust. You know, we, there's some key words in there that we really kind of went in and, and we had this discussion about. But before we got into that, after she was done that video, I said, how do you feel now? And she said, sad. I was like, how do you feel about police? And she said, mad. And I said, do you think all cops are good or all cops are bad? And she, I only gave her those two options. And she said, well, somewhere in the middle. And I was like, good. Like, that's what you're supposed to think. Because before it seemed like it was like, oh, police are good people. Well, no, no, just like anyone. Like, you can have crappy teachers, you can have crappy police. You can have crappy anything. You can have crappy doctors. You know, you, you, you've had doctors that were serial killers. Doctors that euthanized people without their consent or desire. You know, like people that did things, like nurses and stuff like did that kind of thing. We are people. We are individuals. We are humans. I told her I can't compare her necessarily to every other eight-year-old girl in this town even because they were raised differently there's a different context she's an individual there's things that are different about her that are not going to be the same with someone else that's just because they're the same you know age and and perceived gender or whatever so anyway uh that was something that happened today and i'm struggling with the fact that even for her age i find sometimes that her maturity isn't there, she's not taking things seriously, doesn't know what's serious, what's not. Um, I find it very, just very rare she takes anything seriously, or that it sticks. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge and adventure for me to create this, like, really intense but important curriculum in a way that she can understand it, take it seriously, and, you know, putting critical thinking into this context. The critical thinking is something she needs to use everywhere, whether it's, you know, with doing chores around the house or out on the street or, you know, when, with big issues like this. And I told her, this isn't just for you and your safety and being able to to figure out if this is a scenario that you should be in or not, and maybe you need to leave, or maybe you need to ask someone else for help rather than a police officer or whatever, um, but also so you know how other people feel around you. And I even asked her, like, how many people of color are in your class? And we talked about, that's how we kind of introduced this minority and majority thing. And she was like, oh, one. And I was like, oh, so, you know, you're gonna talk about ratios next year in math, but I mean, like, that's a pretty, you know, high ratio of white people uh, to one person of color in your whole class. Um, anyway, I just, I, yeah. That's my little talk about this learning experience, this teaching opportunity that I used. And uh, I, I need to keep doing it. Um, it'll be interesting. It will be interesting to see how that goes forward. I did not expect her to get that emotional about it. Uh, it's a good thing, I don't know, yeah, the thing about being uncomfortable and rising to challenges is a good thing for me, as a reminder to me. It's something that I talk about all the time that I really, really value. And yeah, I mean, there's circumstances in my life right now that are incredibly uncomfortable, that are out of my control, etc. that I, I mean, I don't have a choice but to rise to that challenge in a way, but there's a difference between doing it passively and, you know, taking it really, really head on. Um, anyway, yeah, I just thought this propaganda about police was incredibly interesting is this is a this is a, not an old book this is brand new you know this is i believe 20 yeah 2018 so i mean not brand new it's two years old but uh it's not like police brutality was a thing then and just the fact that they're like police are your friends think of them as your best friend you should go to them for this 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 and this whatever they're there to help you yeah that's their job it doesn't mean they're gonna do it it, it just it, it doesn't like this 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 book has no room for critical thinking apparently in it it's just like exercises and i don't know what i should expect but i mean not that so that's going to kick off the vlog uh two extra videos this week other than the vlog of course we had a conversation about me being racist so you can check that out um the reasons why i say i am the reasons why maybe i say i'm not things i need to work on etc um and also there is a raw ride from last weekend's fernie trip so it is the Sidewinder Trail. I've done it once before. This time I did it with the chess cam. Uh, didn't have a great angle, but um, the whole descent is there this time. There's no ascent there. There's no whatever. So I sprinkled some highlights in the vlog here, but if you want to see the whole ride, go to the Raw Rides playlist. If you want to see that conversation, go to the Conversations playlist. Check those videos out. We will see you on another time.